Hey folks, welcome back to Truck and Trailer Tuesdays on Tractor Time with Tim. Now you probably saw that thumbnail, in fact maybe that's the reason you clicked. You're probably a little intrigued about what this is going to be. Well today I want to talk about kind of the entry level trailer requirements for a subcompact tractor. Many of you have just recently got a subcompact tractor and now you're thinking you know it would be a good time for me to get a trailer. I, I've had several needs so in this video we're going to go through some of those options, what things you might consider when you're looking at a trailer. First I really should probably just give a little bit of history and, and, and tell you of how Christy and I have kind of evolved through the trailer shopping and, and what trailers we've had. We're on our second trailer now, we're looking at our third. The first thing to consider really here is the towing equipment that you've got. Now if you've got a Toyota Prius, uh, just give up. And as you saw in the thumbnail, a Honda Accord, well, I guess it will tow a 1025R. That photo was provided by a GreenTractorTalk.com member several years ago, and uh, I used it with permission, and he actually told me that he's no longer using his Honda Accord. Uh, he's now got an 18-foot trailer and a Honda Ridgeline. Honda, Honda Ridgeline, that's a pretty good choice, Christy, I, I think. I think so, yeah. So the first thing is evaluate your towing equipment. What is the minimum? Well, from a towing capacity standpoint, there is a way to get by, I believe, on 3,500 pound towing capacity. If you've got a vehicle that'll haul 3,500 pounds and you have a very light trailer, uh, you can probably make that work. You'll be right at your limit on, on everything possible, but you probably can make it work. And if you are at that situation, I might consider getting an aluminum trailer. There's really two construction materials that are used in trailers. You can get aluminum, which is more expensive, but very lightweight. You can get steel like these, and like most trailers, frankly. It's heavier, stronger. The aluminum ones are really nice, but they are kind of expensive. Our first trailer was aluminum, and we liked it, but we were always using it right at its limit. And so it became time for us to, you know, to search for a better option after we uh, had had it for a while. And of course, after we got Casey, we just, we just weren't going to have the capacity necessary. So assuming you have a, a little larger truck than that, assuming you have something that'll tow at least 5,000 pounds, again, that could even be something like a Honda Pilot or most any um, uh, SUV will tow 5,000 pounds. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a truck to be able to tow your, your tractor. You just have to watch those ratings. And you know, we might go some more detail in some of those ratings in a, in a future Truck and Trailer Tuesday, but for this one, I wanted to focus a lot on the trailers themselves. There are two main styles that you might look at in this entry level, the, the lightest weight category that we're looking at. Now both of these styles are available in a 7,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating size. Now gross vehicle weight rating, we should talk just a little bit about that. That means the amount of weight that the trailer and its payload can handle. In this case, this is a 7,000 pound gross vehicle weight trailer. It has two axles that are each capable of hauling 3,500 pounds. The weight of the trailer, I'm guessing, is somewhere around 2,000 pounds. So that, you know, that kind of tells you what your towing capacity of the trailer itself is. This style trailer is typically called a utility trailer. So let's talk about that a little bit. What we see here is we see the, the floor of the trailer, and then we see another layer of, of angled steel. Kind of looks like a frame around the whole thing. This is the least expensive style of trailer that you can buy. And the reason they can make it less expensive is because they don't use as heavy a steel. This has got angled steel, angle iron here and here, rather than some more expensive channel steel and heavier channel steel. The way they get away with that is this top frame actually provides some of the stiffening, some of the strengthening that keeps the trailer together, right? So when you begin to go on the back, it doesn't pull it down or something like that. This is, has to be on there for this style trailer. This is not a removable feature. For a utility trailer, you will see this on every time. Another name for these trailers sometimes is a landscape trailer. One thing you'll see is that with trailer naming and trailer styles, it, it kind of varies from manufacturer to manufacturer, region to region, all that kind of stuff. But you learn some of the terminology. In some places when they say landscape trailer, they're talking about something like this. Sometimes it's more specialized. It's got a little higher side on it. Uh, maybe some mesh sides to be able to, to handle weeds and brush and stuff that people throw in there. But these styles are the least expensive, as I was saying. 
Now, before we get too far, we should talk about what length trailer would you like to have? There's an easy answer for this, and then I'll go into more detail. For a subcompact tractor, uh, no matter what brand you're talking, a 16-foot trailer is really probably the optimal size. Anything shorter than that, and, and you're going to have some restrictions that you're probably not going to like. Our trailers have both been 16-foot trailers, and we've not had very much difficulty with that size. You have some flexibility as you move your tractor front or back, depending on how much weight you want to put on the tongue. Um, you have flexibility to take an extra attachment, things like that. If you're in a situation where you need to take extra attachments, maybe two or three attachments with you, uh, you might want to look at a longer trailer. But for the bulk of you, I would recommend 16 foot. Now, some of you are going to ask, but can I get by with 14? Can I get by with 12? Well, you can get by with 14, but you won't have much room for your tractor to go back and forth. Uh, you won't have much choice as to how much weight you put on the tongue, things like that. So I would recommend a 16 foot trailer. Okay, for your first trailer, this really is the other style to consider. It's often called a car hauler or an equipment trailer. In one sense, you say, well, there's not much difference. Yes, it's still a flatbed. The wheels still stick up on the outside, um, but there is one major difference. Notice I'm able to just sit on the bed here. There is no railing around the top here. This trailer has more steel in it here, down lower, along the edges and everything, to be able to handle that stiffening so that it doesn't have to have the rack above the top. The advantages of this are that you can uh, put pallets on from the side, you know, you can reach in from the side a lot easier, slide stuff in, slide stuff out. The disadvantage of this style trailer is that it's more expensive uh, and it's heavier. Okay, so those are two disadvantages. Um, these two trailers that were right here side by side are about $800 difference. So it's a, it's a significant difference in price. Again, these are two different manufacturers. There may be other options, but I'm just seeing that in this one instance. I personally prefer the equipment trailer or car hauler type myself. I, I like being able to get to it from the side to be able to set a pallet up on there. We have taken it to the, to the Menards and things like that, and the forklift comes right out and puts whatever on the trailer that you need. And it just makes that a lot easier to work with. But it is more expensive, it is heavier. That's your choice on that. There are a few other things to look at. Let's go back to the back. As we look at the rear ends of these trailers, we actually see several differences. One difference you can see is the difference in ramps. We'll get to that in a minute. Another difference is just the way this one slopes downward. That's usually called a dovetail. It's not just for looks. Um, it's got an actual purpose. One of the challenges we have when we load our compact tractor is the angle of, a, of approach here for the ramps. When we try to climb those ramps, sometimes things drag behind us, right? And it becomes very difficult in that sense. The advantage of the dovetail is it lowers the back end of that trailer and it allows the ramps to have a less steep angle. The disadvantage, of course, to a dovetail, actually there's a couple. One disadvantage is it's harder to park stuff back here, right? Because it's sloping off and parking on it is, is not so good. Certain types of equipment is no big deal at all with that approach, others is not so good. Talking about the ramps again, there's several approaches on the ramps. You can have a slide in variety. You can also have a full width fold up ramp, okay? And when you get to heavier trailers, you'll see these narrower ramps, we'll show you those in a minute, that are also fold up type ramps. Now let's take a look at these ramps. These are slide-in ramps. That's the same style we have on our trailer. Now, obviously you're not gonna load right here, so don't look too close at that, but I was able to slide that directly backwards, pull it out, and set it right up on this pipe. Also, the way this pipe is made, you can put that ramp anywhere on there. If you've got something really narrow, you can put them together really wide, things like that. I usually straddle the ramp, do it a little bit like this to make it go backwards. Come on down here, Christy, and take a look. The slide-in ramps work pretty well. And once I've learned how to deal with them by straddling them like that, it's, it's actually not been bad at all. If you do get any sort of a slide-in ramp, make sure that that ramp slides directly in where it needs to be hooked on. So you can just pull it backwards, 
set it right up on there. Our first trailer, the ramp slid in way over on the side, so I had to pick them up, carry them all the way to the side of the trailer, and get in. That was a very poor solution for many reasons, but the main reason was is I had heavy ramps to carry all the way around the trailer. Now I'm gonna show you how this ramp works, but I'm gonna warn you. If you see a ramp like this with only this many angle irons in the middle, it is likely not strong enough to hold the tractor. What you'll see on stronger ramps is cross braces where the tires will run up the ramp, making it a little stronger. I would be nervous about this ramp. Your trailer manufacturer probably has a weight rating on each of the ramp styles that he's got. Pay attention to that. But this goes down quite easily. I would say right here it weighs in the neighborhood of 30, 30 pounds, maybe 40. You can also get this same style in a split ramp where you only have to do half of it, okay? So it'll be a lot lighter. Many other options you can do to this. For instance, they make spring-loaded improvements so that you don't have to have much weight on these at all. We, maybe we'll go into some of that in a later video. So another aspect to consider about your tow vehicle is the concept of trailer brakes, okay? Each of the trailers we've looked at here this evening have built-in electric brakes on the trailer. Those electric brakes are controlled right in this seven pin connector right here. So if your truck is already equipped with this seven pin connector, you probably are most of the way where you, where you need to go to get brakes. Now, larger rigs like this one, you can get a built-in brake controller. In fact, for the Super Duty Fords or, the, or for the 2500 or 3500 of the Ram or the Chevy, you can get built-in brake controllers easily. I believe even the 1500s and 150s, you can get it in some models. But if you have something like an SUV that you're gonna try to get by with the tow, you'll need to add a brake controller. If you get the towing package, you'll probably already have it all pre-wired but you'll have to get a brake controller separately. Now we have a video where Christy was doing most of the work actually, but where we installed a brake controller on our Honda Ridgeline. There was a hidden connector up under the dash. We had to plug that into the brake controller and then just mount it somewhere under the dash. And it worked well. That type of a solution will work with almost any rig that you can get a, a built-in towing package for. So even if you have a small towing vehicle, I highly recommend getting brakes on your trailer. In fact, I think that's a way to compensate a little bit for the lack of towing capacity. I'm still not recommending that you tow more than the towing capacity of your vehicle, not at all. But I'm saying that if you're close to that max towing rating on your vehicle, that having brakes on the trailer will help a lot. It doesn't really matter sometimes if you're slow to start out of a stop sign, but it does matter that you can get stopped in a hurry. Someone just this evening ran across the road to chase their soccer ball right in front of us. We need to be able to stop quickly no matter what the situation. So I highly recommend you hooking up the trailer brakes that will be on either the equipment trailers or the car haulers. Anything that's a tandem axle, over 3,000 pounds GVWR will have brakes built into both axles. At least here in Indiana and I think in most states that's a requirement. So in addition to it being safer, it is kind of the law. Now it's about the first cold day of the year here and the sun's beginning to go down. So I think maybe we should finish up this video before Christy freezes. Yep, thank you. <laughs> I hope that's given you some things to think about for an entry level trailer. Really you're talking about probably $2,500 to $3,500 for these style trailers. Of course, you can dress them up more and you might find one that's a little bit cheaper, but that gives you kind of a, a, a general price range. When Christy and I first got our tractor, we had no idea that we'd want a trailer at all. I really didn't even think about that. I suppose this is just another one of those situations where the tractor has cost us a lot more than what we originally anticipated. I'm sure you guys have never experienced that, right? We had the tractor and then we had the shed which was kind of unanticipated. And then we had the trailer. And then I'm, I think I better stop there because I do want to go home for this evening. But what happened for us is we first got an attachment or two, and then we found at church that people would be talking about 
needing to remove a bush or needing to do this or needing to do that. And we would say, well, if we just lived closer, we could do that for you. If we just had our tractor over there, we could do that for you. And before you know it, we, we said, you know what? Why don't we get a trailer so that we can help our neighbors? And even then, we weren't thinking about trying to do this for a business or anything like that. It was just a way to help our friends to be able to load up and have that tractor mobile so that we could go from place to place and use it. And so now, we just view the trailer as another attachment. For instance, you add a rototiller, it adds a lot of versatility to the tractor. You add a rough cut mower, a rotary cutter, it adds a lot of versatility to the tractor. Well, you add a trailer and that adds versatility as well. It allows you to get to where the projects are. So, when you view it like that, it really is just a part of the whole tractor process. So finance committees, you have to approve that. Uh. <laughs> I hope you found this helpful. And if you've got more questions on trailers, leave them in the comments section below. If you've seen something obvious that this video has left out, please check at the top. I might have a pinned comment where I may have left something out of this video. And if so, I'll put it right there at the top. Otherwise, leave your question right there in the comments section. We will continue to have more of these Truck and Trailer Tuesdays with more information on this. I'm thinking some of the next things are going to be talking about gross vehicle weight rating. A little bit deeper what that really means, talking about uh, CDL requirements. Uh, we're going to go back to talk about the truck selections that we've made and some things like that. All this coming up in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. I thought about trying to hook the Prius up to the trailer. <laughs> well, they let me drive the combine. So wouldn't you know it, I made a mess, broke something. I run a snoot in the ground.